Tonight on Cougar News, we take a look at how Santa Clarita is reacting to the gun violence happening around the country. Also, we catch a glimpse at COC's new parking lot construction. And see how a local school is raising hope and funds for disabilities. Cougar News starts now. This is Cougar News. Hello everyone and welcome to Cougar News. I'm Jeline Aguilera. And I'm Alana Martinez. And here's the latest from the Cougar Newsroom. Across the nation, the Women's March Youth and Power Movement called for a nationwide walkout for gun reform after the bloodshed of the Parkland shooting. This is how COC students participated. Placing names on empty seats for each victim who died in the Parkland shooting, students shared their concerns about their safety. I, I am scared personally. And demands for change. So don't be surprised when the students raise up to make a difference for our own. During a gathering that was part of a nationwide school walkout. So that, I think that was a really great thing to see so many people come out for something like this uh, because it's a tough topic to talk about. Numerous speakers from faculty to students shared their worries and fears, lamenting the need for active shooter training. Involved tactics such as hiding near the door and having a student draw fire while they attempted to tackle them before anything happened. No student should be put in that type of position. And the lives lost due to gun violence. Karen Shentrup, 16. Like the hair stood up on the back of my head. It's heavy stuff and I'm not, it almost feels like other people are like numb to it. Like they don't really, like they understand but they don't really know. Organizers encouraged others to not just hold a sign pleading enough, but sign a letter to their congressman requesting laws to improve their safety. Every one of you can do something. All at like, write your congressperson, write your state senator. This walkout, called for by the Women's March Youth and Power Group, is the first in a series planned by various organizations. The next one being the March for Our Lives protest, scheduled March 24th. For Cougar News, this is Mauricio LaPlante. Local officials are grappling with the surge in threats made against Santa Clarita Valley schools. Kayla Brown shares details on impacts to students and how administrators are fighting back. After the devastating events in Parkland, Florida, high schools within the Hart Unified School District have received several threats of violence. These recent threats at Hart, Saugus, and West Ranch High School have raised the concern for safety among students and faculty. As adults who are charged with the responsibility of not only educating our students, but giving them a safe place to be and helping them feel that they're wanted and they're protected. Uh, it's very concerning. This is someone's life. Someone's life is getting cut short and to think, oh, I can't see one of my peers graduate high school is extremely like hurtful because once you realize you can't see them walk, you can't see them grow up and you're stuck growing up without them and you lose a piece of yourself and everything's not the same without them. The Heart District also has psychological support for students through educationally related intensive counseling services. We have uh, over 40 licensed therapists who work here in the school district who help students whenever they feel the need to talk to someone. If a situation is to occur, whether it is um, a threat or even a personal situation that a student might be going through, the Eric's team will uh, come in and be able to talk with that student and try to offer the services to help them get through the, the situation that they're currently in. The schools in the William S. Hart School District are willing to work with their students as long as the students stay safe. For Cougar News, this is Kayla Brown. In the aftermath of Parkland and similar shootings, the community has banded together to discuss ways to prevent gun violence in Santa Clarita. Jed Bookout has more. My call to action is the murder of my son. Santa Clarita residents have one very important question after the countless school shootings that have occurred in 2018. What do we do to make sure this never happens here? A panel of students, teachers, police, and parents explored this question at Vincenzo's in Newhall. We need to create some enforceable laws, some laws that we can actually stand up and the police officers and the sheriffs can actually do something about. 
we just need to start looking towards stricter gun legislation because if you're afraid of getting your gun taken away, then there might be a reason it should be taken away. The discussion was passionate, with most panelists having previously experienced deadly gun violence before. Students Nicole Pearson and Caroline Smith were themselves survivors of the massacre last year at Las Vegas Harvest Festival. I definitely thought I was safe in Vegas and that didn't happen. But... Moderator Stephen Daniel made it a point early on in the discussion to establish that none of the speakers were actually against the Second Amendment. After what they had been through, they just did not want to see assault weapons end up in the hands of civilians anymore. Gun violence to me is like a clock. It's not a clock. You cannot find a missing piece to it and just fix it overnight. Most of the speakers didn't seem to have a consensus on why mass shootings occur, but tried their best to find the answer together. One thing that the speakers and the audience all seem to agree on, however. Vote them out. Get out. Vote. Well, it doesn't start with the schools. It starts with our politicians taking action on a national level. For Cougar News, I'm Jed Bookout. As the debate over gun control continues throughout the United States, activists and gun owners in Santa Clarita discuss their worries over more restrictions and potential threat of another mass shooting. My parents are worried sick about me not coming home. Shortly after a 19-year-old man killed 17 people in Parkland, Florida, students in Santa Clarita and across the country voiced their fears of losing another life because of a mass shooting, leaving others concerned about being one step closer to losing a right. When will it stop? You know, say 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 for example if we do ban, you know, quote unquote assault rifles, um, What's next? Gun owners like Matt Funicello worry that protesters are trying to take gun control too far. Emotions right now are high. And generally speaking, when emotions are high, decisions, decisions are made that don't make sense. However, activists such as Mariah Lima want to avoid division. Creating this schism is it's not helping. And um, we have to really try to facilitate that discussion because um, that's the clearest path to a resolution. Their efforts are to push for gun reform in order to ensure school safety. It seems like there's some um, misconceived ideas about what really happens when a school shooting, about who accesses them, about the mental health issues. So yeah. if we can all come to terms on what that really means, maybe we can have a more clear idea of what to do. I do watch my back. Meanwhile, this student, who asked not to be identified by name, shares similar fears. Because it is kind of scary to think that there could be someone, you know, with that mindset that would want to kill people at the school. But he believes there's much more to blame for the violence than just the guns. Guns can be used as weapons. Um, however, guns don't kill people. People kill people with guns. In light of the various points of views in this debate, Lima hopes that supporters of more gun restrictions can reach a common ground with the other side. It's a general concern about safety on campus. That's something we all feel. If they have, sometimes it hap sometimes students have very political views, and um, we have to understand that, but it, they, they still want to be safer on campus. For Cougar News, this is Mauricio LaPlante. It's game over for a local business. Here's Jed Book out with more. Toys R Us has announced the closure of around 800 U.S. stores following the news that around 100 of their U.K. stores would be closing as well. Toys R Us has existed as the major retailer of toys since 1948, but have been struggling to maintain relevance against retail giants like Amazon and Walmart. The company had filed for bankruptcy six months ago, citing a $7.9 billion debt against $6.6 .6 billion in assets. Liquidation of the company will occur in the following months. In a surprise move of Tuesday morning, President Trump has fired Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. The president posted the news to his Twitter feed early Tuesday morning, also announcing CIA Director Mike Pompeo as his new choice for Secretary of State and Gina Haspel as the new director of the CIA. 
Tillerson will technically serve as secretary through March 31st, though he announced that he would be delegating all responsibilities to his deputy. World-renowned theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking passed away Tuesday at the age of 76. The cause is unknown, though Hawking had long outlived the expectations set by his doctors. In fact, he lived 56 years longer than expected. Hawking is survived by three children, Lucy, Richard, and Tim, as well as three grandchildren. And that's The Scoop. I'm Jed Bookout. For more cool stories in and around the Santa Clarita Valley, you could check us out at cougarnews.com. Back to you, Jaylene and Alon. Thanks, Jed. A man seen around the, the world in a viral video is behind bars. Cougar News reporter George Ventura has the latest on the year-long search for a man involved with road rage. <gasps> road rage caught on video that went viral all over social media last year. Okay, we're stopping. Andrew Flanagan, the orange motorcycle driver, has been under investigation since last June. Only a portion of the incident was recorded by a passing motorist who posted the video later on social media. Even though officials won't explain to us how they caught the suspect, they are glad that the mystery is finally over. Today I am very proud to announce that we have made an arrest of the individual that we believe is responsible for this incident. That indivi individual is uh, Andrew Flanagan, 45 years old of Arleta, California. Mr. Flanagan has been booked for three felony charges. Felony uh, assault with a deadly weapon, felony reckless driving, and felony hit and run. Assistant Mark Garrett uses moment to remind drivers to avoid road rage and get home safely. Felony, your job to yourself first and to the other motoring motor public is to get home safe. And it's these types of events that unfortunately remind us of the responsibility to drive with caution in regard to everyone's public safety. And for Cougar News, I'm George Ventura. Homeowners in one Santa Clarita neighborhood are picking up the pieces tonight. They escaped with scratches after a garbage truck slammed into their home. The 21-ton truck came to a rest in a driveway, leaving a path of destruction in its wake. The driver was collecting trash on Carnegie Avenue when he lost control of the vehicle. Sheriff's deputies are working to determine what led to the crash. The driver suffered minor injuries and was transported to the hospital. Coming up next on Cougar News, we discuss how COC's new parking lot construction is creating issues for faculty and students. And stay tuned as we take a deeper look into a local comedy show called The Society Improv. The American Red Cross urgently needs blood and platelet donations and asks donors to schedule an appointment to give now. Every two seconds, someone in the United States needs blood. Your blood donation is critical and can help save lives. Please, schedule an appointment today. Download the Blood Donor app, visit redcrossblood.org, or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. You can make a difference. They've been uh, very caring. They care about every, every single student that's in the class. Yeah, everyone seems to be like pretty friendly with each other. Like, no one's really afraid to ask each other for help. It's working with other people, not uh, being ornery, uh, actually you know, listening to what people say, collaborating with them to create a really good product. It's great to use the same stuff the pros use, especially at a community college. Hopefully we give them a pathway to, to have their creativity uh, showcased. I've gotten a great education. I love the access to equipment. I've made lifelong friendships. I have great teachers. This is Cougar News. The new campus parking garage that is under construction is limiting the number of parking spaces, creating issues for faculty, staff, and students. Reporter Louis Tran tells us more. Crowded, frustrating, tiring, 
a few words that describes the experience for many that try to find parking at COC. It takes me 30 minutes to find parking on an average basis, so I have to come 30 minutes before class. Like many faculty, Nicole Faudry, the department chair for the paralegal studies and business departments, have expressed concerns with the new parking format. It was difficult to see people who come um, er to campus early at 8 o'clock in the morning and just park there all day long and never leave when we have people who are struggling either to get to class or it's really difficult for them to walk longer or greater distances. Due to the new parking construction, students are not without 700 parking spaces. Lot 2, originally a staff-only parking space, was turned into a student lot to help compensate for the construction. You know, now everybody knows about it, so there's no spaces over there anymore. Faculty and staff are now encouraged to park in COC's practice fields. Since most faculty are part-time and teach between multiple campuses, the new parking location impacts their day-to-day -day activities. Things that we put all of our papers and books, etc. into, um, and it's difficult to lug that across a grassy field. COC currently offers discounts on Uber and Lyft rides, is organizing class schedules to evenly spread traffic on campus throughout the day, and is also working with the city's public transportation. One more thing that we're doing that we haven't got in place yet, but we will for the fall, is bus rides. We we're going we're to subsidize busing for our students. Students and faculty are slowly adjusting. However, both do believe the parking structure will greatly help down the road. Um, we definitely um, um, need a parking structure, and I think it's only going to benefit students. For Cougar News, I'm Louis Tran. The flu season officially ended last month, but doctors are sounding the alarm. They say the sickness plaguing the nation is still packing a punch. Reporter John Nathaniel has more. As we are approaching the tail end of the flu season, Many people are saying this was one of the worst flu seasons yet. Uh, flu season's coming down. It's a lot less than it was between the months of uh, December, middle of that, through end of January. It was really bad in the emergency room. So is the flu season really coming to an end? No. <laughs> it's not <laughs> over yet. Uh, not quite. It's, been, it's still been very busy. The ERs have still been really impacted. And um, people are still coming in with flu symptoms. And why did the flu affect so many people this season and hit so hard? Um, basically, the, uh, the influenza uh, vaccine that, that was given is uh, it, it was against a specific type of flu that is kind of more aggressive towards children. Um, but the actual flu that hit everybody was more aggressive to adults and it's not the same strain. So basically the, the, the child popula population was covered, but not the adults. I think it's just a different strain of the flu. It's mutated and the flu shot's not effective because it hasn't, it's not treating that particular strain that people have. And you may be wondering, what should I do to help prevent catching the flu next year? Get the, Get the flu, flu shot. shot. <laughs> Wash your hands. <laughs> uh, flu shot would be a big one. Just kind of keep an eye out to see what strains available. Drink plenty of fluids, Motrin, Tylenol, because honestly, when people come into the ER, unless you're really young, elderly, and have a lot of comorbidities, you can take care of this or uh, really at home. So if you do have to go to the emergency care, always wear those masks that they give out. Wash your hands with everything you do, especially if you're in contact with people that are coughing or get the flu shot even though this year the flu shot wasn't quite as effective it's still you know hopefully next year they're going to make it a little bit better make sure you're taking your vitamins and bundling up out there for cougar news i'm john nathaniel saving lives can take years of experience several hundred students are now one step closer to making a difference in medicine cougar news reporter Luis villa has more if you want it bad enough you'll work hard to reach your goals to realize your dream. This past Saturday in the University Center, the Physician Assistant Student Club hosted the third annual Physician Assistant Expo. A physician assistant is an extension of the doctor. He or she can prescribe, treat, do anything that the medical doctor can do under the medical doctor's supervision. Attendees had the opportunity to talk to different people within the physician assistant field and get information from those that have already paved their way or just starting to in their careers. A lot of people had a lot of questions uh, in regards to some for the profession, some to the application process. They had questions for physician assistants themselves. 
Um, yeah, I think it was great. However, not only did participants have the chance to ask questions and gain more information, but they also had the opportunity to talk to and meet people within their field. I think one of the biggest benefits for events like this would be the networking opportunities and also just to kind of be inspired and motivated to know what the next steps are to become a very competitive PA applicant. School organized events like the annual PA Expo can give you great benefits to help you reach your career goals or possibly to maybe even make new ones. So make sure you become active and take advantage of the great opportunities here at College of the Canyons. There are many of them. For Cougar News, I'm Luis Villa. And now on the latest on entertainment. John? Thanks a lot, Jaylene. A comedy group in Santa Clarita called the Society Improv invites all residents to join them for a night of laughter. Reporter Elena Tovar joined in on the laughs. Let's take a look. Just relinquish the gift and I'll get you another one. <laughs> Good! A sold out show in the main theater hosted a humorous group named the Society Improv. Society Improv is a group of very talented individuals, all working actors, who do a family friendly improv show. These performers are very similar to the TV show Whose Line Is It Anyways? Taking suggestions from the audience, they are able to create scenarios, musicals, and games at that very moment. Kirby and Lincoln encourage individuals to try improv since it can be creative and it's just fun to see what happens. <laughs> While it can be fun, it can also be scary and difficult for some. Anyone can learn how to do improv. It does take some uh, bravery. If you are interested in getting involved, you can visit the website jointhesociety.com. And they can read on how to do games and improvs and learn for themselves. And go see the improv show. Do it for yourself and go see shows. Improv is perfect for anyone who is willing to explore their creativity, their humor, and their inner self. Reporting for Cougar News, I'm Elena Tovar. The summer blockbuster season is still a month away, but Hollywood already has its blockbuster. Black Panther is nearing the $1 billion mark domestically, marking it one of the top grossing Marvel films of all time. Filled with deep culture, Black Panther gives you a glimpse of long established and traditional living in Wakanda. Doing so well, Marvel has already confirmed a sequel, although nothing is in development yet and no date has been confirmed. Finally, if you're looking for a good local theater to finish out the month, you don't even have to leave the Santa Clarita Valley. The COC Theater Department will present Almost Maine in the Black Box Theater at Santa Clarita Performing Arts Center for a limited engagement running from March 23rd to March 31st. Written by John Cariani, Almost Maine is a play made up of nine short stories that explore love and loss in a remote, mythical, almost town called Almost Maine. For more info, contact the PAC box office or visit the PAC website. Back to you guys. Students looking for a change in scenery over the summer may be in luck now that the French department has brought back its study abroad program. For more information on the program and the upcoming meeting, here's Bobby Block. Valencia, Canyon Country, and Paris, with two convenient campuses located in Santa Clarita, sometimes it can be easy to forget that College of the Canyons has opportunities for students to study all over the world. This year, the French department is offering students a chance to spend a month studying in Paris. They take classes in French at the University of Paris in the morning, Monday through Friday, based on their level of uh, French and then take a French culture and conversation class with me in the afternoon. Although this program is more than just classes. While they're there, they have a pass, an unlimited pass for uh, the subway and the buses in Paris. As part of the program fee, the students get a pass that gives them unlimited access to all Paris museums. So some of the visits to museums, like the Palace of Versailles, we actually organize and we all go together. The rest of the time, of course, they're free to do what they want with their past. There's a meeting coming up, an informational meeting, not at all required, simply for people who are interested. Um, Thursday, 
uh, March 15th at 6 p.m. in the uh, TLC, uh, room 160. The meeting will last for about one hour and will be open to all students, even those who are not taking French. For Cougar News, I'm Bobby Block. Coming up next on Cougar News, we take a look at how volunteers are maintaining our local hiking trails. And stay tuned. With wedding season approaching, Santa Clarita professionals give advice to those planning their big day. In a home fire, can your family safely escape in two minutes? I heard my oldest son holler for mommy, and all I could see was smoke. The boys, we never really worked with them, I guess, on telling them what to do if there's a fire. We lost our child. We lost everything. Make sure you can safely escape a fire. Practice your two-minute drill. Test your smoke alarms monthly. Make your plan today. A place where students learn they can believe in themselves. Behind every possibility at College of the Canyons are the people. Together we focus on achieving success, one student at a time. That focus is a reflection of what we value. It defines who we are. We are. We are. We are College of the Canyons. This is Cougar News. Welcome back. In Santa Clarita, one student is currently fighting for her life, but enjoying every moment with her family. Georgia Rios brings us more on her inspiring story. Meet 16-year-old Cheyenne Hughes. Unlike other teens, she is fighting for her life. Last year, Cheyenne was diagnosed with a vigorous tumor growing alongside the back of her neck. Cheyenne underwent proton radiation as well as a risky surgery. A limited chance that she was going to survive, um, yeah, but she did survive. Um, actually, did pretty well. They, they were expecting a 30-hour surgery. It was about 10 hours, um, and they got most of the tumor, um, and she came out with hardly anything other than just a halo. And so. She did really well, and she was able to walk, and then she came home, what, I think five days later, so. One year later, after beating the odds and defying the tumor, Cheyenne is now back in the unfortunate game, with her tumor growing back at an alarming rate. They did say that they couldn't get positive, they couldn't get um, clean margins. They were, um, which means there's tumor all over her spine and um, area. It grew seven centimeters in five weeks. Um, so at that pace, um, eventually we'll start putting the pressure on the spine and stuff so Cheyenne herself is not afraid she said to dad you know I think I'm gonna be okay and that was the first time I think that she had voiced it you know feeling like everything was gonna be okay now her parents and three younger sisters focus on making more memories together you know we try to keep her spirits up and we try to keep all the kids spirits up and we try to go do things and get out of the house and do things that are fun and try to have um, those experiences where you can build memories because, you know, really anybody, we're not guaranteed anything. Nobody's guaranteed to have health. Um, it's probably the number one thing people take for granted. So, you know, just make those memories because something could happen in an instant and you don't, you don't have them. Reporting for Cougar News, I'm Georgia Rios. Local students are learning a lesson you can't teach in the classroom. Cougar News reporter Audrey Hickson shines a spotlight on a labor of love for students with disabilities. The first ever Hope in a Future run was held Saturday at the West Creek Park. The run featured a 1K, 
5K and 10K course through Santa Clarita's Paseos. The Imago Day School at Trinity Classical Academy organized the run to raise funds for their program while also highlighting March as National Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month. The type of education we provide is very unique and it's very costly as well. We have a very low student-teacher ratio. Uh, we provide educational therapy for all of our students. So it's a fundraiser and all of the money goes directly to um, bring in more families. The event featured a health and fitness expo that included popular vendors and also featured businesses and nonprofits that work with the developmental disability community. Awards were given out to the first, second, and third place winners of the 5K and 10K races. IDS serves a wide variety of students and focuses on giving each student the best learning environment. Profits from the Hope in a Future Run will go towards scholarship opportunities for children with disabilities in the Santa Clarita Valley. For Cougar News, I'm Audrey Hickson. Santa Clarita offers endless hiking and adventure, but who keeps all the trails ready for bikes, horses, and hikers? Our Nicodante takes us to the hills to find out. Santa Clarita offers 80 miles of trails that take advantage of the city's natural surroundings. But what keeps these trails in such good shape? There's a group of us and we come out here every Wednesday and every second and fourth Saturdays and we do trail maintenance. These volunteers love the outdoors and their community and that's what keeps them coming back. To join them to maintain the trails and I never gave a thought to the fact that the trails don't really maintain themselves so I've been out here maintaining these trails for years because I hike them and I want to make sure I have something that's uh, good to hike. Their work can be enjoyed at Towsley Canyon, where they recently finished a new trail and continue to maintain the existing ones by... Brush the, the uh, debris off the trail, the overgrowth, and then we also work on the tread, which is uh, outsloping it and putting in water bars to keep the water off the trail. These volunteers work from 8 a.m. to noon twice a week, and the community is well aware of it. All the people that hike these trails that we see here every week, they're very thankful that, you know, we, we are maintaining them and, you know, clearing the brush and they're very happy. But trail maintenance isn't the only reason these mostly retired volunteers do this work. Well, it's just nice to get out and get a little exercise and see what, what you've done when you're finished. Uh, it gives me exercise. I keep my weight down. When out enjoying nature, help keep it natural. For Cougar News, I'm Nick Adante. Let's play ball. College of the Canyons men's baseball look to get their second conference win against Antelope Valley College. With the conference play just starting up, the Cougars hope to get off to a strong start this season. Sam Delgado has more on the game. COC baseball faced off against Antelope Valley College for their second game in conference play. Calvin Estrada would get things going for the Cougars hitting a two-run bomb to left field in the first inning. Blake Dormus would hit a three-run shot to deep center field to give the Cougars a 6-0 lead in the third inning. He would finish the game with two home runs and five RBIs. You know, I just gotta, you know, I gotta thank my coaches because, you know, they've been talking to me and giving me some ideas with approaches. And uh, my coach, Smitty, has just told me to be relaxed and you know what, it's working. Ivan Lomelli would save a base hit, making a tough diving catch. Senatoli Tofma would double down the line to bring in a run, making it 7-0 in the third inning. Cougars starting pitcher Jackson Cunningham struck out five and allowed two earned runs in six innings, helping COC get the 11-3 win over Antelope Valley College. With the win today, the Cougars improved their overall record to 11-7 and 2-0 in conference play. With Cougar News, I'm Sam Delgado. Coping with the loss can be difficult but a local basketball player shows how passion on the court can keep his sister's memory alive. Basketball is not just a sport for this family. It's a lifestyle. A lifestyle with meaning that pushes the Levias family to the limit. Basketball is not just a sport for this family. It's a lifestyle. A lifestyle with meaning that pushes the Levias family to the limit. It was just the beginning of uh, a new life for me, a, a different life. 
Seneca Levias, mother of two, lives with the grief of the loss of her daughter, Ati, who was shot and killed, leaving her with her son, Johnny. He's my, he's my only son, and he's my reason for living. If I didn't have him, I probably wouldn't live. Johnny, playing for Golden Valley High School, shows his love for basketball. Basketball is a lot to me. I've been playing it since I was young. And I think without basketball, I'll probably be getting in trouble, getting bad grades or something. And it just keeps my mind off of a lot of things. With his heart on the court, his heart remains with his sister. Even when she was here, I was still playing basketball, doing what I do and playing hard no matter what. But what keeps this family going strong? You take it hour to hour sometimes, and when it gets really bad, it's minute to minute. A loss that only makes them stronger. We kind of just take our days day by day and we do what we need to do to heal. A tragedy that only hit this family hard, it only pushes Johnny to play harder on the courts and hold on closer to our loved ones. Reporting for Cougar News, I'm Julian Aguilera. Do you know someone who is recently engaged or have you ever dreamed of your wedding day? The planning may be more stressful than you think. That's why Santa Clarita wedding professionals are here to help by giving you some of the best tips for planning of your big wedding day. Cougar News reporter Michelle Lutz gives us the inside scoop. Let's take a look. The rings, please. No one wants a disaster like this on their wedding day. Oh, oh God! No! no. Oh, 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 my God. oh my God! After all the excitement of being engaged, planning a wedding can be stressful. Santa Clarita wedding professionals are here to help by giving you some do's and don'ts for your big day. I think one of the biggest challenges that brides have when they start to plan their wedding is where do you start? It's important to start early and um, I think my best advice would be you know trust your own instinct, your own gut. Weddings can be overwhelming but they're meant to be something to look forward to and to enjoy. Always remember, it is about your marriage and your lifelong commitment. Also, don't be afraid to ask professionals and even friends for advice while planning. There's a saying we have in our business, which is the day after your wedding, you're an expert. The biggest mistake is not communicating. It's how to manage their budget, because that's the one thing that most couples we talk to and say, what's the biggest challenge They're right away? It's, oh my gosh, the money and what everything costs and stuff. Pinterest is a wild dream, so, you know, kind of, it's, it's a good idea to go, I kind of would like this, but don't expect that. Pick what's most important to you as a couple between the two of you and focus on that first. And then from there, just enjoy the process and trust the vendors that you're working with. Find a place where you connect, where you feel like it's family, it's home, but yet professional. In the end of the day, when you look back 20 years from now, you're gonna want your pictures to reflect you and it, the flowers should reflect you and what you love and who you are. Enjoy the journey. For more tips and tricks, go to cougarnews.com so you don't end up in a disaster like this. For Cougar News, I'm Michelle Lutz. That does it for this edition of Cougar News. I'm Alana Martinez. Remember, you can catch us on the web at cougarnews.com. And I'm Jaylene Aguilera. You can also send us news tips and story ideas to our Twitter handle, COC underscore Cougar News. And follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Have a good night, everybody.